Bonjour, ça va? Do you have your mic? Your microphone. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, but I can't hear you. Just say something to me, Gautier. Okay. There you go. Okay, okay, that's okay. <laughs> okay, how you been, my friend? Uh, I'm okay. I have kids uh, downstairs, so <laughs> it's a little bit noisy, but uh, it would be okay. Yeah, you have a time. First of all, and uh, it's a great honor to us. And uh, I really say uh, thank you for your time. I know you are a busy man. Now you are a coach too, and you have things to do as a coach. And as a coach, we don't have too much time to. It's a great pleasure to us. And uh, okay, guys, our guest not necessary to introduce, introduce because he's on a top five in our history. He's a legend, a great fencer, and a great gentleman. And uh, one thing, good here. For sure, you talk about fencing, about tactical, about uh, how you drive the combats or how you drove the combats in your career. Uh, but uh, just to just to everybody understand more the, your your history, when you start uh, fencing and uh, where in France? So uh, I was born in a little town uh, in the middle of the France called uh, Nevers. So uh, my father was. Uh, fencing master uh, in the beginning he didn't want to me to to be a fencer so he didn't uh, allow me to uh, to come to the fencing hall and uh, take a, a, a blade or a foil to to practice he didn't want it, uh, that to me but uh, I wanted so bad to to to, to do fencing to practice that uh, uh, once my mother uh, took me to the to the fencing hall and uh, put me in the in the in the sequence, and uh, my father had to had to do it. So uh, I started fencing at the age of three. Oh my God! You're born in the fencing room. <laughs> it was old, and I never stopped. Yeah, you're born in the fencing room. Your 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 dad is a master fencer, so you can yeah. do everything. But fencing is obligatory. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't want it to me to 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 do uh, to do fencing. And after uh, later in my life, um, when I was uh, at a point that I have to choose what I will, uh, what I would do uh, for a living, uh, he told me, "Don't be a fencing master, please." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I give the same advice to my my son. Don't be a fencing master. Do another thing. Yes. Be smart. <laughs> so, so uh, I started uh, studying um, history and uh, archaeology because uh, I, I love uh, cinema and movie uh, theater, and I wanted to to do as um, Indiana Jones, you know, <laughs> hat and uh, and the whip, and uh, <laughs> so I started uh, to study in uh, archaeology, but uh, it wasn't uh, very good for me. Uh, it was in 2004. And uh, then uh, after the Olympic Games in uh, Athens, uh, I saw uh, I trained with uh, Hugo Bri, another famous fencer, and uh, now he's, uh, he's coaching uh, China. Yeah, uh, as an old friend. Yes, and uh, I, I started to, to take lessons with him at, at that time uh, when he just finished uh, his career of fencer. And uh, I was like, uh, okay, this is what I want to do. Uh, and uh, at that point, I started uh, to um, to study in order to be a fencing master. Good. So you disappoint your dad because you'll be turned a fencing master. <laughs> I, so much is important, but uh... <laughs> it's good. And uh, when when you realize, Gucci, okay, I'm started doing fencing. I'm a fencer now. Uh, and uh, okay, maybe I can be good. Maybe I can take this in serious like a fencer. When you realize, okay, I can do this in the best way possible, and maybe one day go to the French team. What age you start to figure out the things start to happen to you in competitions? You know, it's uh, it's difficult to answer to that question because uh, 
I, I, I have an uh, image, I have uh, pictures, I have um, thoughts, I have um, a phrase from my father. Uh, I can't uh, tell you when it was, but I remember that uh, when I started fencing, when I was practicing against uh, other, I was like, uh, okay, I want to touch the blade of the other one. I want to give it in the blade, but uh, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not focused on the target. Uh -huh. And uh, then my father told me, try to eat the target, but not the blade. So this is the first, uh, first thing for me, very important uh, in, my, uh, in my later career. Uh, second thing is uh, my, my, my personality, my character, that um, I always wanted to beat uh, people. Uh, I always uh, wanted to fence with um, the older guys. And uh, I never wanted to lose against the, the older guys. And when I fence, when I practice against a younger, younger opponents, I didn't want to lose either. So uh, <laughs> this is another, uh, another thing of my personality that I never, uh, I never wanted to be uh, beaten. Uh, after that, there is uh, things in, in other pictures, uh, the Olympic Games in uh, 1982, Barcelona. Uh, it was a good, uh, a good year for the French uh, fencing because yeah. Eric Sreki was uh, uh, winning the gold medal and uh, Jean-Michel Henry uh, gold, uh, uh, won the bronze medal. So uh, two medals, uh, Jean-François Lamour, also a bronze medalist and uh, Philippe Omnes, uh, gold medalist too. Uh, so this is my first uh, souvenir of, uh, of uh, Olympic Games. And uh, at that time in 1982, I, wanted, uh, I said, my mother told me that uh, I said that uh, someday I would be on the, on the Olympic I want to be in this place. No? Yeah. So uh, this, is another, this is another, another thing. And after there are uh, results in, uh, in competition. So uh, you start uh, local competitions. Uh, I won uh, a local competition and I was okay. Uh, this is okay, but uh, uh, baby steps, you know, baby steps, baby okay. steps. Always you are uh, angry of uh, victory. And, uh, and uh, then uh, you, you, you reach the, the top of the, of the pyramid, but uh, it's never been, um, it was a goal. It was a goal, uh, but never uh, an end. And um, when I reached uh, our national center in uh, in CEP in Paris, uh -huh. I trained with uh, the best fencer uh, in the world at that time: Aubry, Janet, Janet, Bois, Janvier, Lucenet. Uh, I arrived in uh, in in, uh, in this center. It was in September 2002. So Aubry, Janet, Fabrice, Janvier, Lucenet were uh, world champions in team event. And uh, okay, I was like, uh, okay, this is... Uh, <laughs> so I'm a baby here. Do all my best uh, not to be, uh, you know, you not, not to be expelled uh, in, in, uh, in the end of the year. And uh, last, the last uh, picture, the, the last uh, things who define my character is... Um, the Olympic Games in uh, 2008, Beijing. Uh, so I was uh, the second uh, substitute. I was second reserve for the, the, the French team. Uh, so the three were uh, Janet, Janet, and uh, Robéry. The first reserve was uh, Lucenet, and I've, I was the second reserve. And uh, I saw uh, a guy, José Luis Abarro, uh, oui. fence that day. He, he won the, the bronze medal. And I was like, okay, it's not uh, in the technique, it's not in the strategic, it's uh, also in the, in the head, the in the mind. And uh, it was, uh, it was, um, I was hit uh, by a bus that day, uh, seeing that guy uh, uh, winning a bronze medalist, and it inspired me. As um, Tagliariol inspired me, as uh, other fans inspired me, but. This, uh, these games inspired me uh, and uh, I was like, okay, you have two years now uh, because in two years you will be, um, you will uh, have your diploma and then you can uh, start to, to work. 
So you have two years to two two years to perform. Otherwise, you leave uh, fencing and you you start to to earn money to to work. And uh, in 2009, I performed very well because I finished the year uh, uh, number one uh, ranked 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 ranked, uh, ranked yeah. yes. And uh, the year after too, and uh, I managed to um, to qualify for the London Olympics. Uh, London London Olympics was very bad for me. Uh, I had a lot of questions in my mind, and uh, Aubrey again uh, helped me to. Uh, to answer those uh, all uh, those questions right. in order to be uh, to be good in uh, Rio. Uh, in Rio, you did a good job and uh, got your gold medal in uh, in Olympic Games. Good year. You told one one interesting thing about when you start. You remember your dad advice about don't look the blade, look the targets. And yes. you, I think you is still with this advice for your your career because you try work the most part of time of course with the french grip on in time no how about you don't uh, yes. work in time and try figure out how you how can i touch without use too much my blade and uh how you arrive in the so good level to the famous hand invisible hand touch from gucci you no know? so you work more uh, this is more for the kids for sure no the answer was more hard work and footworks or hard work and feel the correct moment when you can go and get out without receive the touch how you how you build this in your mind this situation well i think uh, i wasn't uh, the best uh, fencer in uh, in footworks uh, later in my career i tried to to work a lot uh, that part uh, but um, uh, the, uh, it's it's part of our culture, our French culture yeah, of everything. Uh, we use uh, we use the tip, uh, and uh, you, you know, I always say to my athletes, go deep in the in the lines. So uh, if you go deep, you go with your your tip, and uh, and you can uh, manage to touch uh, the hands or uh, or the targets. Uh, but this is a culture from uh, my father, then from uh, Michel Sicard, then from uh, Stéphane Ribou, and after uh, Hugo Bri and Jérôme Roussa. But uh, this is uh, our, um, our mind. This is our fencing in French. Yeah. It's not, it's, yes, it's not only me. It's, uh, it's uh, how we, we do that, how we do fencing in France. And uh, after footworks, uh, I wasn't uh, very good uh, in the beginning. I tried to uh, to be uh, better after years. Uh, after years, uh, during the before just before London Olympics, um, uh, I work a lot with uh, Hugo Bri uh, in uh, footworks. Uh, oh, I'm seeing me. It helps me a lot. And uh, and after it was uh, it was okay because uh, I I knew that I have I had the techniques I knew that I had um, the um, tactics I knew that uh, uh, physically uh, I wasn't the best uh, uh, physical uh, athlete <laughs> but, uh, I have uh, I had many arguments to uh, oppose to uh, to physique to um, <laughs> to athletics so. Uh, it was okay. I could manage, and uh, and that's it. So uh, yes, I had, um, uh, as you say, the the moment, the the targets, the choice of the targets, the choice of the moment, uh, because of the of the of my end, of um, because of my story, because of my culture, because of, the, of my uh, my training, my 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 successive coaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the French is cool, no? So the position yes. of the tip, the tip forward yes. all the time. Exactly. So okay, and uh, I have one question from one of our students here. The name is Isaiah. He's our biggest fan. And uh, he would like to know how you, or if you, I, I probably know the answer, but if you work your mind, let's put this way, mind games, le, 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 le travail mental, sur la préparation, no? imaginez le combat dans votre monde, if you work in the imagine the situations, do concentration. If you did that in your career, no. 
I never uh, work uh, mentally. Uh, it was uh, I never with some with somebody in order to be better in uh, in my mind, in order to be uh, better in uh, mentally. Uh, it was always my goals, and uh, it was always my experience what I lived in the competition and how I used uh, my uh, my experience in order to better the the the, the competition after. Uh, for example, uh, London Olympics, uh, I put uh, uh, a lot of art in order to be uh, qualified to qualify to the to this um, event. Uh, this event, I wanted it so bad that uh, I uh, I was I wanted to control everything in my uh -huh. paper, and uh, and the results was uh, were very bad because I lost in, uh, in the first match. Against Piazicki, and then I saw Piazicki. Uh, uh, you, you, you gave the medal to Piazicki. You gave the medal. I'm not sure, sure that him, him, but <laughs> maybe it's me, I can beat everybody. <laughs> uh, he took his medal. He won his medal uh, alone. Alone. He didn't need to, me to to win a medal. But uh, you know, I, I put so much uh, things in the London Olympics that uh, after for Rio I wasn't. Uh, ready to do that again so uh, after uh, after london uh, i was uh, about to quit fencing uh, because i didn't want uh, i have no you put too much expectations no when still expectations and wasn't uh, i didn't feel it and uh, i was um, about ready to to give uh, to give up and uh, to to start uh, to be uh, a coach because i knew at that time uh, Aubry uh, might uh, need uh, an assistant coach, so uh, maybe uh, was, I was in my mind. I was maybe the person to uh, to be his, uh, his assistant coach uh, at that time. And um, he, I, I talked to Eric Srecki at that time. He was um, the leader of uh, fencing, and I asked him if it was okay for me to stop or if I had to continue. Uh, fencing and uh, he convinced me to keep going and uh, and after that uh, I stopped uh, <laughs> a lot of things I was okay now I don't want to control everything anymore so Hugh, you will say what uh, you want me to do and I do it and that's that's it I don't want to uh, to control everything anymore and uh, for that uh, I arrived to uh, to Rio uh, my mind free it wasn't so free because um, I had the uh, London Olympics in my mind uh, that day uh, during the individual uh, event uh, in Rio. Um, I had flashbacks of uh, London uh, when I saw uh, Daniel Gerrand losing against uh, Francisco Limardo. The first match, I was uh, relieving my uh, my match in um, the London Olympics, so it was uh, it was a bit hard. But I was ready in my mind that if I didn't win or if I didn't win a medal, it would be uh, it would be okay. It would be no problem because there are a lot of fencers that uh, uh, made the games, a uh, lot of good fencers that didn't make the games, uh, and so it was uh, it was okay if uh, I didn't succeed, and uh, I leave some pressure uh, of that. In order to be uh, to be good and to be okay for uh, for the for the match to go yeah. to the maybe you you are putting too much pressure in the unnecessary in your back in London no? yes because that you can you can liberate all your quality all your things you think too much in yeah. don't in don't fencing too much you know, the, yeah. uh, because you know I, I was studying to be a, a coach and uh, all the, the you know the the, the teachings was like uh, the athletes has to be uh, in the center of the um, of the training. Uh, you might you have to uh, decide some uh, some things. Uh, uh, if you are a coach, you have to uh, speak with him uh, in order to uh, um, for him to agree to the to the process. And I was like, okay, uh, I want to do the same as they say in in, uh, in school. But from my experience. It's, uh, it might be it might be okay for some people, but uh, not for everybody. And yeah. uh, for me, sometimes you can't. Uh, <laughs> my wife told me uh, earlier that uh, you can't reinvent 
um, uh, you know the I forgot the la roue. I forgot the, the word in English. You can't re, uh, reinvent the tire, you know? Yeah, uh, for sure. So, or uh, my father told me, uh, you don't um, uh, uh, invest the uh, hot water. So, um, you, you can't uh, invent things that already exist. So, fencing, be good in fencing, there are things to do, and other things to not do, and uh, you do it. That's it. Okay. That's David, do you have some question to Gauthier? David, Jose, I you yeah. have your mic open. Raise your hand, guys. Hey, guys, take a picture of the mics. Please have some mics open. Kenny, do you have some question to, to Gauthier? Uh, ben, une question peut-être technique, je peux la poser en français peut-être? Oui, tu peux parler en français. C'est plus facile. Euh, ben, une question. Pour, pour avoir travaillé un petit peu avec euh, Michel Sicard, un peu, Maître Sicard, et ainsi de suite, euh, je me demandais, tu sais, c'est quoi, mais pas avec Aubry justement, puis tu sais, j'ai vu les belles performances, puis le succès que euh, Maître Aubry a, tu sais, présentement. Euh, c'est quoi les, les différences qu'il y avait tu sais, un petit peu ben, dans, dans le coaching entre euh, Maître Aub euh, Aubry et Scar dans le fond? OK, this, this translated for English first. So, uh, Mestre, Master Kini is asking about uh, what was the, the difference Gauthier feel working with the two great coaches, one legend like Michel Sicard and after or, or Hugui Aubry? So how he feel the difference or was a natural? Okay, go forward, go chase with you. Uh, you know, I trained uh, two years with uh, Michel Sica when I arrived uh, in SEP in 2002 until uh, 2004. And I work uh, eight years with uh, Aubry. So uh, the difference, it's difficult to answer to that question because uh, I think uh, Aubry's uh, coach was uh, Michel Sica. So uh, Michel Sica, uh, Has a big uh, had a big influence on uh, on uh, Hugo Aubry, but uh, Aubry um, is uh, you know is is a natural leader in a team, and um, uh, you know sometimes he took us where well, we were in training camps, and uh, he took us uh, for uh, an an activity an extra activity. Uh, we were on a bridge, and he said uh, with uh, ropes on uh, on our feet, and say. Uh, No, uh, go, go for it. You know, uh, it was a rubber, rubber, uh, rubber rope, and we have to 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 jump in the in the emptiness from a bridge. So, uh, and he was like, uh, okay, so I want you to do that, but I will teach by example. So I uh, I jumped the first first. Uh, so this is a natural leader. Uh, maybe has uh, less skills than uh, Michel Sicard, but. Um, It's different, different personality, but the vision is the same. Vision is the yeah. same. We can, we can put this way. Michel is, a, as you told, is much more a master to not only a coach. And Aubry have yes. one presence more, more, more intense with the fencer. No, he's a more, more present, like a leader, like a real uh, general in the battlefield. This is this way. That's right. Good. Okay, Mark, I know you are great Grumier fan too. Do you have some questions to, to Grumier, Mark? Jose, I think your mic is open, Jose. Oh, hi. Your mic is open. I can listen, I can listen, your, I can listen everybody in your, in your room. With me? Okay, Jose, do you have some questions to go to you? You can do it. Okay. You can do it yes. Spanish. I can translate it to English. So. Okay. Okay. Eh, eh, pregúntale a Grumier. ¿Qué en su estado mental, en su estado mental, en una competición, ok? Si él tenía en un combate, en un match, ok? Si se sentía siempre, si, 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 si siempre mantenía la respiración, 
The breath, ah, the breath, the breath. The breath. Okay. Y siempre mantenía la respiración controlada. Ok. So, Butchier, this is, a, this is the coach, José. He was, a, he was the, uh, responsible for the physical preparation for Ruben Limado for more than 10 years. He won the medals with Ruben Limado and uh, he's working with one of my, with my kids now. And he asked to you if uh, during the competitions, during the, the, the biggest combats, before the biggest combat, you try to control your breath, control la respiration, or you just go and do what you do because I, I do that for all my life. Well, combien tu fais ou tu seulement tu allais tirer pourquoi je sais qu'est-ce que je vais faire et je vais faire ça je vais faire ça pendant ton, toute ma vie hein ou vous faire quelques exercices pour contrôler la respiration ou just go and dance like this. Uh, for uh, I never I never been uh, teaching about uh, 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 breath control or respiratory uh, moves. Uh, uh, with my experience, uh, after many years of uh, I, uh, I experienced things, but like uh, in the um, hot moments, in the very stressed moments, uh, uh, in the beginning of a match or uh, uh, between uh, very important uh, touches, uh, in the end of my career, I start to... Um, Breathe uh, to, to breathe a uh, profound breath, uh -huh. uh, big insp inspiration, and then uh, uh, try to let go in order to um, to distress myself, in order to uh, to be more focused, in order to be uh, less uh, contracted. Yeah, if I understand, if I understood a little bit, you was much more in your career. So you was much more confident about your skills, about your ability, about your technique. So I know what I need to do. I did that all my life. You just want more combat. Let's see what's happened. It's almost this way. No? You never know what you have to do <laughs> because uh, you never know uh, what's, uh, what will, what the problems uh, your opponents will give you. But uh, you have to do it, so you have to act. And uh, but yeah, that's the good, uh, the good, uh, the good things to say. Uh, two weeks ago, I were uh, I was in competition in uh, Sofia, Bulgaria, and I had an athlete. Is uh, he, he did things, good things, but he never he never act on the on the street. So all my coaching was like, please act, do something, please act. You are just uh, moving, you are just watching, but you never do anything. So please do, and so you never know what you have to do. You you will discover what you have to do on the, on the strip with your opponents. What the story you will uh, you will uh, you will make with uh, your opponent. So to be confident, uh, not uh, uh, I was not uh, over confident. Uh, I had my confidence, but uh, you know uh, my biggest fear was always to lose. The first match in the competition. So when I was before, <laughs> I was always uh, scared to to lose the, the first match. And uh, after the first, the I, first combat in match, what? The, the first combat in '64 always was your panic. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, how was uh, how you drove? How was your normally routine one day or two days before the competition? I try to to uh, I try to have no routine. Uh, this is um, a thing that I discovered in 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to uh, Tallinn, <laughs> uh, woke up there, and uh, I didn't add my fencing bag, and uh, I had to go to the um, to the competition without a fencing bag. So uh, without my stuff, without my glove, without my shoes, without my mask without my uh, AP, without my blades. So I was like, okay, what can I do? Now <laughs> I can do nothing. So I tried to find the blade. I tried to find the shoes. I tried to find a uh, mask. I tried to find a glove. So uh, I started the competition with um, the, the uniform of uh, York Fiddler, the glove uh -huh. of York Fiddler. Yeah, I, for sure. I, I, uh, to choose a bonaire and I was okay, so I have to do it. Uh, I tried to let go. Let go. My, my strategy, my strategy was to leave the moment, 
Don't try to um, don't try to uh, you know uh, write the story before it, it, it uh, it's written. It. Because okay. always uh, when I was always doing that, uh, okay, so I have to do this in order to do this. I have to do that. The, the story blows up in your hands. You never Good. do it. Perfect. Nice. I think we have a question for our coach, Toby Tolly. And uh, she you do a question to you. She's coming here. Because we are in the club, you are teaching. Look at my black jacket. <laughs> This coach, Toby. Hi. Hi. Go, boss. My question? Oh, so, so my question is... Um, Here in the United States, um, you know, our fencers tend to start very young. And then when they get through with college, so many of them stop before they develop the patience in the brain, especially to fence Epe. Um, do you also have that uh, in France or is that specific to the U.S. fencing? And what would you say to encourage um, young fencers to, to consider it more of a, a lifetime sport than, okay, I'm, I'm an adult, I'm 89, I'm going to stop fencing. Vous avez compris bien? Yes, yes. Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a system because in, as, as I know in the United States, uh, I know that the fencing is a way to uh, achieve college to go in for, college for very university. few though for very few it's it's uh, always a uh, much person that can go to a university by fencing than by uh, basketball or foot, uh, us football so maybe it's uh, it's an element uh, to understand uh, why mm -hmm. maybe in the united states they stop uh, after the junior uh, category or they don't go uh, so much uh, in senior but right. uh, It's a, it's a part of the system. We have the same problems in, uh, in France. Okay. Uh, it's maybe a problem of uh, the competition system because uh, when it's um, a, a competition system uh, very close, uh, not open, close uh, for uh, some, uh, some guys, uh, when you are not in the top, uh, top guys uh, and you can't uh, achieve... Uh, participation in the World Cups. Right. What's the point to, to continue fencing, to continue right. competition? So in, in the years coming, in France, we will have a problem about this because our national competitions are, for me, from what I'm seeing, from uh, we have uh, not so much uh, old guys, old fencers yeah. who continue to fence because they have no more the the chance to, uh, to participate to uh, the Paris World Cup. They have no, not so much chance to participate to World Cups because it's very uh, a closed system. Uh, so when you, are, you, are, you finish uh, your junior years and uh, you didn't manage to go to the World Championships in junior and uh, um, you have very few chance uh, to, uh, to join uh, INSEP, it's possible. Uh, for example, uh, Ron Augustin, he had to, uh, to, to, to go to INSEP, but he never uh, participated to a World Championships in junior. He never, he never participated to a World Cup in junior, and uh, he made all his career in senior, and uh, he achieved to, 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 to go to INSEP. But it's very, it's very delicate, and, and I think in France we will have a problem in the few years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part of the reason I ask is I did not fence uh, until I was in my 20s, yes. so, which is like crazy. Um, but I fence every day for 10 years and I was lucky enough to, to go to World Cups and to win nationals and do well here. So it's a different experience for me here. But okay, thank you. Thank you too. Okay, Anna, I think you have a question to go to it. Okay. Ok, eh, Evandro, pregúntale, ¿quién fue su adversario más difícil? Ok, Gautier, ¿quién fue su adversario más complicado en la calle? ¿Quién le repite? ¿Quién fue el más duro adversario que vos encontré en tu carrera? Uh, all, all, all of them. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> all of them. Uh, after the, the, 
the uh, the toughest uh, maybe someone I never beat uh, and uh, I never beat uh, Piazeki I never beat. <laughs> yeah, Piazek was your worst your <laughs> adversary. <laughs> You remember him for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. For me, too. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah, he's good. And, uh, eh, eh, Evandro, ¿cuál era su toque preferido? And uh, how uh, was your preferred touch? Is the touch you say, you think, okay, this touch I you do, doesn't matter who is my adversary, I always do this touch. Quel est votre plus fort touchant? Celle qui allume. <laughs> Good. <No. laughs> no. I, I, lo I love the, um, the touch in the hand and uh, under, uh, under the hand. Uh, but uh, it comes and goes uh, between the opponents. It's not, uh, uh, I will do uh, whatever it takes. I will do this touch uh, in, uh, in the match with uh, this opponent. Uh, he, he, you have to you have to build your the story of the match, and uh, when you build the story of this match, you can uh, you can do uh, what what no uh, yeah. the touch you want. Yeah. <laughs> the best the best touch the touch you more love it is the touch number fifteen, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you give the touch number fifteen, is the beautiful touch. Yeah. Okay, Guilherme, you have here our kids too because uh, Saturday we work with the small kids and after we work with the big kids and the small kids. Hey, kids, say hi to Gautier, Guilherme. Hi! Hello. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this guy is one of the top five in all history. He's a legend. Now he's a coach. Poor guy, he decided to be a coach. But he was a great, great fencer. He's a great honor to have him here. Do you have some question to him, Logan, about fencing? Maybe you could ask him how old he was when he started fencing, or what his favorite weapon is, or... When he started fencing. There you go. When? Uh, okay, I think you... you uh, Logan's arrived now, so he missed the first question, but just remember, what's your age when you start fencing, Gucci? I was three years old. Three. Three years old. Because his dad is a, is a master fancy. He's born in the fancy room. He's, yes, a, he's a poor guy. Poor, poor children. <laughs> he's born in the fancy room. Kate, do you have a question to go to? I have so many questions. I'm yeah. going to let them go first. Evandro. Uh, okay, Mark, okay, Mark, go. Yeah, I have a, a question as well. For, first, uh, it's such an honor uh, because you're uh, one of my most favorite fencers. And, and I didn't start when I was young. I started when I was over 60 years old. <laughs> yeah, but I, I fence left-handed and uh, I don't mind that I get bruises. I, I like to fence anyone. Uh, but uh, uh, you, have, you have a son, in fact, uh, children, are they uh, uh, starting fencing? Um, and, um, and by the way, yeah, again, your style is, I, I find beautiful. Uh, and I think that's the the uh, opinion of many people uh, that you have extraordinary precision, and that that uh, you were very you're a great fencer. So uh, I, and the, my other uh, fencing person I like is uh, Giza Emre <laughs> because uh, he did so well when he was uh, older uh, older. But um, uh, yes, are you are your children uh, wanting to fence as well? So. Uh... First, uh, thank you for your your, uh, your compliments. Uh, I have three three boys, so I have a team. Uh, I might present them for the Olympic Games in 2040, uh, but uh, 2040. So, uh, for the moment, they are not uh, they are not fencers. The first, my my older one, is uh, five years old, and is not very interested by fencing. Is more like. Uh, Acting or singing is, uh, is more like a singer, so um, he have a, a lot of things to do before uh, before fencing. And um, I had twins, twins boys, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> they are one year old. So uh, maybe uh, in the future we will see. And um, my wife is a former saber 
she she practiced saber. My uh, stepfather is a uh, also a saber master. So oh uh, <laughs> they will go to saber, not not epic. <laughs> no, you'll be sad. Uh, the, the son of the great Gautier Grumier turn a saber, so it's okay. Huh? <laughs> I don't right. care. Really, I don't care. <laughs> they yes. can, they can let do them for follow it. their dreams. Let them follow their dreams. It's uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And uh, I think I have another question. Toby, do you have another question? Okay, so Roger, I have a question. Okay, go, Mel. So, Master Grumier, I I really am grateful for for the uh, the education of watching your videos. I wanted to ask you. I have issues where I fence my best when I'm in the zone, but then I'm not very conscious. And so when things stop working, it's hard to understand what my success came from. Can you address the issue of uh, being with the spirit versus having a conscious understanding how one applies oneself in, in the situations I described. Uh, uh, some part, I'm not sure about the zone. Because... So, um, when I was uh, fencing with uh, Jeanne, the Jeanne brother, uh, the thing we were focused uh, before uh, going to the match, we were focused during the match. After the match, we, um, we made a little debrief. And then when we go back in, um, you know, in the in the stairs uh, uh -huh. with the other one with the, the rest of the team, we was always saying bullshit. So in order to evacuate what uh, was uh, just what we had just done, and in order to prepare to prepare for the the next match, uh, we uh, we we talk about jokes, we talk about everything but fencing. Uh, or uh, we talk about fencing, but we we made jokes uh, in order to uh, to reduce the pressure, and uh, because you can't uh, be focused at 8 a.m. in the morning and stay focused at uh, to uh, 8 uh, p.m. It's, it's it possible? so you have uh, to focus uh, for 15 minutes, then you uh, defocus, and then you refocus, and then you defocus, and uh, all you have to do is prepare for that exercise. So uh, when we had the training sessions, uh, Michel Sicard uh, organized it. Uh, we, with our group, our fencing group, uh, with the Janet brother, with Aubry, we had times where we regroup between uh, matches. And uh, in that period, in those periods, we, uh, we were uh, saying bullshit, we were uh, saying jokes, we were uh, uh, talking uh, European football, uh, we were talking uh, Paris Saint-Germain, we were talking uh, <laughs> a lot of things, but fencing. And in order to, when the coach say, okay, in piste, in strip, we were, we, we, uh, we put the, the trigger. Hey, the key. Uh, Good. Do you have a question, Katie? This yeah. is coach Katie, is one of our coaches here. Hello. Hi. Um, so, I guess the biggest question that I have, so I just switched to French grip about four months ago. Um, and my, I think it's a, a better choice for me, like it's better for my style, but um, the problem that I'm having is a consistency with my hands position. So like my wrist, um, when I'm taking the blade tends to be a little bit too soft or I either tend to push too much on the blade rather than using my bell guard. Um, what kind of drills and um, things can I focus specifically on for individual practice to help with that? Vous avez compris, Gauthier? Uh, pas tout. Quel exercice que tu peux faire pour faire le fortalecement de la, de la main 
pour, 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 so, pour se tourner plus facile la utilisation des poignets des poignets français hein. des poignets droites uh, uh, engage disengage beats in everywhere in every in every side you can cut uh, everything uh, in lessons for, uh, i have um, athletes that uh, you are using a french whip and uh, all i do with them is uh, Uh, to uh, for them to um, I have to muster the hand so I use the uh, beat I use, uh, disengage engage everything uh, all, all, all those things but I always um, uh, I never muster my uh, my my hand my wrist with um, you know with the weight I never uh, do uh, things to in order to uh, muster my weight my arm with uh, with weight lifting i was always do that by um, using my uh, my ap at lessons and uh, in match this good yeah it's more practice lesson hard lessons blade actions and that the hand will become strong no uh -huh. then after that you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, reach for uh, light materials you know uh -huh. um, you, when you choose uh, your blades Uh, choose uh, blades that the, the weight is more uh, to the end, so to the guard, than uh, uh, to the tip. I'm not sure I'm clear, but the balance of the blade is, uh, is uh, important. The, um, the, the weight of your guard is important. Uh, and that's it. Good. Good job. And uh, Gucci, uh In the end of your, when you realize, okay, after the Rio de Janeiro, maybe now it's time to stop. How was this in your mind? So I live more than 10 years in the French team. It's not easy to stay in the French team for more than 10 years. And uh, when you figure out, okay, this is my last day here, uh, how was your feeling? I was really. No, I need a decision. <laughs> no, okay. no. I, I, I took the decisions uh, in 2012 or 2011. I can't remember when I took the decision, but it was clear in my mind that uh, I didn't want to be pushed uh, away from the from the team. I didn't want it to someone to show me uh, the exit. So I wanted to choose when I would stop uh, my career. Uh, and uh, today that uh, I uh, stopped my career on the bronze medal uh, in, uh, in the Olympic Games and uh, finishing the number world uh, number one in the world, uh, I say it was a good time to retire. Yeah, we need to retire like Pelé, no? I need to retire in the, in the up. <laughs> yes, yes. But you know, uh, I was uh, I had um, it was very hard for me to accept. Uh, to be um, treated like a child sometimes, you know? Uh -huh. uh, the coach uh, said, uh, you have to do this uh, and uh, I want you to do this uh, like that or uh, I don't want you, uh, I want you to be uh, present uh, for this training and uh, for, for me, uh, I accept that until the end my, of my career. I never uh, try to, um, to, um, to do less than the other. Uh, uh, when it was uh, group sessions, uh, but uh, at at one point it was uh, it was hard for me to be considered as me. Uh, I, I have this feeling, but uh, I didn't want to be considered as a, a child. I wanted to be considered as a, an adult, and uh, I I knew things. I I knew that my coach knew more things, and I think we we could uh, uh, do uh, things together. So we we managed to do that with uh, with Hugh, but uh, instead I was uh, I was warm. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, too much for me uh, uh, to prepare for no, another four years. Uh, it was not four this uh, this time, but five years. Uh, to prepare with uh, another another coach because I have to really change uh, the head coach uh, to. Uh, To prepare uh, and uh, it was too much. I was I had a very good relationship with uh, with Aubry. Uh, he's, a, he's a close friend for me, uh, and um, we built uh, something very special together. And uh, I didn't want to to do that uh, with another person. Uh, 
Uh, I had a big injury in 2013, uh, a big injury in my ankle. So um, uh, I had problems with uh, my ankle uh, all the, the uh, during the, the four years for for Rio, huh? and uh, it was uh, it was too much for me. Yeah, I understand. Everybody needs to stop one day, no? It's unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. No, I, want to, I wanted to still perform in fencing, but uh, from another point of view, from another perspective. Uh, winning match is uh, okay. Uh, I know that I can uh, win match. I, I know how to win a match. Uh, I know uh, what I loved is, was uh, to have control uh, on the, my opponent. How uh, I can uh, uh, set uh, traps and uh, he goes in my traps. How uh, I will uh, make uh, thing him. Uh, I go into his trap, but it's me uh, in Z who uh, are trapping him. But uh, uh, I wanted to do that, but from another perspective. Uh, and this uh, this helped me to to take the decision. <laughs> But I never regret uh, to take this decision. I never fence again after uh, after you. Uh, this is this is great, and uh, you did one beautiful career. And for Lucky, you have a YouTube today because people don't don't see you fans can see you and YouTube and see great battles from you. All, every Thursday here in our club, we have one uh, video analyze. And uh, to the kids, I send by home. Sits the kids send answer back, and we sit down Thursday and get one hour watching videos. And uh, the most part, great part of the videos I send to the kids is about you, is about your videos, about how you drove the combat distance, how you don't uh, <clears throat> feel the necessity to work in the blade, how you work in time. So you are the great inspiration for our kids here. And believe me, it was a great honor and a great opportunity because I'm sure our kids never imagine one day talk with you. And uh, we put this in our YouTube channel uh, because unfortunately last weekend uh, we have a problem with the internet. So many guys don't can enjoy today, but there you see in the YouTube, your interview and uh, your generosity with our guys. Merci beaucoup, Maître. Merci beaucoup, mon frère. Uh, C'est un grand plaisir. Hein? Thank you. Thank you in our name. Thank you in the name of the fencers. Thank you in the names of the other clubs who join us here today. And uh, they they will be happy listing you in the YouTube. It's a great privilege. And when I and when I back in French, I call to you and you take a coffee together. A real coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anytime uh, when you did when you did, you call me and no problem. Merci Gauthier. Merci and uh, Go take care of your kids. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye. Merci, mon frère. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. See you. Bye. See a bientôt, you. Gautier. A bientôt. Merci. Merci. Merci.